So today I can report eight new cases of COVID-19 in the community, all in Auckland, and there are four new cases in recent returnees in managed isolation. Now, seven of our eight new community cases are known contacts of existing cases. So progress does continue. Yesterday, I reported four active subclusters. Today, that is down to three. And this is where we have seen cases emerging in unknown contacts, and public health efforts are obviously heavily focused on those active subclusters. Separately, in three of our subclusters, representing 15 cases, it's been a month since we reported any active cases. Now, formal closure of those subclusters and subsequent ones that are inactive is still more than a week away. We wait a full 28-day period or two 14-day infection cycles after the last case has finished their 14 days isolation. But as you can see, we are making good progress. Now, one of today's new cases was confirmed after a person presented at the emergency department of Waitakere Hospital last evening, and this is the case that is currently unlinked. That person was rapidly assessed on arrival and moved into an appropriate area not long afterwards. As soon as their test returned positive, they were transferred to North Shore Hospital where they are uh, being uh, cared for. That is the usual operational plan at Waitakere. They are in isolation at the moment in a negative pressure ventilation room with all appropriate protections. As a precaution, five uh, members of the Waitakere ED have been stood down while there is further assessment made by the occupational health team and eight patients who remain in hospital and were in vicinity of that case are being treated at the moment as contacts and again with all the appropriate precautions. Uh, the ED was able to remain open with ambulance, ambulances diverted to North Shore while a deep clean was undertaken and it is now operating again fully. On wastewater, ESR has reported to us a positive detection in wastewater in Tauranga from a sample that was collected on the 23rd of September. Now follow-up samples from Tauranga and Mount Maunganui were taken this morning with results expected on Thursday and additional samples are also being taken from nearby areas, including Paeroa, Waihi Beach, Katikati, Matamata, Tipuki, and Makatu. Unexpected wastewater results can be due to a, a recovered case there, or a, 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 who is excreting vir viral fragments, or an undetected acute case. Our usual protocol is to wait for a second test result before taking any further action, but in this case, and given that we are, we know at the moment, uh, dealing with the Delta outbreak in Auckland, we are confirming for people in the Greater Tauranga area, reiterating that ask, and that includes Mount Monganui, get a test if you have any symptoms at all, or if you have been at a location of interest in either Tauranga or Waikato or Auckland. The locations of interest are updated daily and are on the Ministry's website. Testing centres in the region will be open extended hours today and there will be more testing pop-ups available from tomorrow and the location of those pop-ups will be on the healthpoint.co.nz website. Likewise, uh, any workers that are travelling across the Auckland boundary and into Tauranga, uh, please check if you're up to date with your regular testing. If you have any symptoms, remember isolate and get a test. Our surveillance testing in the Auckland region continues uh, and this is part of our ongoing control of the outbreak and has focused uh, uh, pre over the last uh, um, two weeks, uh, sorry, month on uh, essential workers and more than 50,000 essential workers have been tested. Uh, we're now shifting the focus to those workers who have come online uh, since Auckland went into alert level three, so-called permitted workers. So the request has been made it's not a requirement, but a request of those workers to, over the next two weeks, whether you have symptoms or not, to get two tests at least five days apart. This is part of our surveillance testing, and we're particularly interested in those working in construction, hospitality and retail. Uh, workers with no symptoms who are being tested do not need to isolate, awaiting the test result, uh, and continue, can continue to work, of course, taking all the usual Alert Level 3 um, precautions. Finally, uh, an update on the vaccination status of our cases so far in this outbreak. There have been 1,185 cases to date, of which 260 are children under 12, so are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. 
Of the 925 people who are eligible to be vaccinated, 718, or 78%, have had no vaccinations, whilst just 38, or 4%, were fully immunised. That is, they had had their second vaccine at least two weeks before becoming a case. The remainder have had just one dose, that's 150, or a second dose less than 14 days before they were infected, just 17 people in that group. Now, of course, those 260 children who have become cases in this outbreak is significant, given that they are not yet able to be vaccinated. It is up to the rest of us to protect them. So having the vaccine clearly, from even our results here, protects the person being vaccinated, but it also protects those who are not vaccinated, including children, but also uh, frail older people who may be vaccinated but susceptible, and of course people who are immunocompromised. And the shout out today, I'd like to acknowledge our rangatahi, our younger generation. Despite them being the last group to be able to access the vaccine, more than 60%, nearly 64% of this group have already had one dose. Uptake in this group, our 12 to 19s, has been faster than in any other group. So instead of having an exponential increase in COVID-19 in Auckland, we got an exponential increase in vaccination in our 12 to 19 year olds. Thank you to, for your leadership and the example you are setting for all of us. Back to you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Dr Bloomfield. At the time that Auckland moved to Level 3 a week ago, we announced that the boundary movements would remain the same, as in they would be very limited in order to reduce risk. However, there are really valid reasons that people do need to relocate. To date, the Director-General of Health has been able to issue exemptions for a specific and genuinely urgent reason. Over the course of the outbreak, he has granted 800 altogether out of roughly 6,000 requests received. But after six weeks, people's situations will naturally change and the urgency uh, for many increases. In short, people have been able to delay moving house for only so long, for example, or starting a new job or continuing with their tertiary education. Many people intend or need to leave Auckland permanently or part of their life, such as their child, is across the boundary and they may have shared care arrangements. With the move to level three, but also with the new testing requirements for people moving across the boundary, we have a higher level of confidence that we can safely make some changes to border movements. So from 11.50pm tonight, people will be able to travel across the Auckland boundary and into a level two environment if they are, one, relocating permanently, either to move into a new property that they have purchased or rented to start a new job, or to travel to a tertiary education residence. Two, if they have shared caregiving arrangements, so for instance, joint custody of a child. Three, if they're returning home from alert level three to an alert level two environment. There are rules. First, if you're leaving Auckland and not returning, you need to get a negative test within 72 hours before your departure. So that's the same as the requirements for those where it is already a permitted activity to move across the border. For those crossing the boundary for shared caregiving arrangements, because this involves more back and forth travel than a one-off, they'll need to have a test within seven days of each crossing, just like the crossing uh, requirements we have for those who are moving freight or are part of essential work. Everyone must carry proof of why they are travelling and you must not be sick uh, when you travel. If you are a student, please get in touch with your tertiary accommodation provider beforehand to help facilitate your return. Another pressure point in our COVID response, which we've discussed often, is MIQ. We know there are significantly more New Zealanders trying to come home, particularly as we near the end of the year, than there are places available. We have tried to make the system fairer with the introduction of a lobby system that means everyone trying to get here has an equal chance to do so and doesn't have to sit at a computer for hours pushing refresh. And tonight, further rooms are being released into that system. Between 5 and 6 p.m., an extra 3,800 rooms will be released to be booked for October, November and December. It follows last week's release where more than 5,000 people from 117 countries secured vouchers and means that more than 12,000 people are coming home for Christmas over the next few months, with thousands more rooms to be released over the coming weeks. 
The reason we stagger those releases is because some people may have urgent needs that only arise, say, in October or November, and it allows people to get equal access uh, if those needs um, arise uh, a little closer to the time. It is now six weeks to the day since Delta was reported in Auckland, and since then, two and a half million COVID vaccines have been given, and that's enormous. It also means it's timely for many of those people to be getting their second dose. And there are several new ways to get your jab now. Just a couple uh, to be aware of in Auckland this week include a two-day event vaccination uh, event being held tomorrow at the Assembly of God Church in Te Atatu, and another at the Vodafone Event Centre in Manukau across the weekend. We can't afford to take the pressure off. In Auckland Metro yesterday, 15,163 vaccines were given, just over 4,000 were first doses. Now, that is a decline on first doses for Auckland and a sign that we are hitting those higher percentages and it is going to take us more effort. Hitting 90% of the eligible population vaccinated by the time we review alert levels in Auckland, of course, gives greater confidence, but would really require people to step up their rates. Please get vaccinated this week, especially if you're a level three worker. Your vaccination could mean the difference between your company being open or shut, your workmates being well or sick. And to those businesses making time for employees to get a vaccine, we say thank you for all the efforts you're making to support your workforce to stay safe.